guys. Welcome back to Insecurity. I am Crystal. And I'm Hey Friend Hey. And we're diving right into season two, episode three. Let's do it because it's opening scene. I'm it ready. It is. It <laughs> is because who is Issa hugged up with on the couch? None other than Luke James. Shout out to Luke James. I said, well, bitch, if you finna move forward and start a whole phase, <laughs> this is one way to do it. <laughs> That's how you set the tone. I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> so Issa and Luke James are making out on the couch and she cannot stop cracking up every time he touches her in like a sensual way what was the deal with that the giggles you know i don't i think she was nervous and not ready to do it because he was so fine or at first i thought it was oh you know this is a weird touch it's not lawrence's but she should be past that i mean low-key i was like you cheated and had a blast right. at the studio that day. <laughs> you did. No, you had so like much fun fucking on, on the couch. A whole blast. You had a great time. So that's I was like, what <laughs> happened now with the nervousness? Right, with the nervous laughter. But you know, they get the shirts off and, mm-hmm. and you know, it's it's looking like they about to go at it, but Issa cannot stop cracking up. <laughs> and she calls it weird. And at that point he's like, Okay. Yeah, she brought up something about his fingers being weird. I yeah, was like, like they, your fingers feel weird, and he's like, like you can stop, you can stop laughing. She's like, okay, that's the last time. <laughs> Yo. So she just can't chill out and and get into the moment. Right. So they end things, you know, rather awkwardly. She puts her shirt on inside out, I think, <laughs> and then jersey. tells him that she bought it from the swap meet, right. which he didn't ask. <laughs> he was looking like, okay, who gives a shit where you bought it? <laughs> what? <laughs> She tries to leave, but she goes to the bedroom. Oh, we didn't make it there. <laughs> that part took me down. That was... <laughs> and then when they, when the camera pans back to him, he's just pointing at the door like, like that way. She's like, oh, I can't tell your, your finger. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what? This show keeps you cracking up, man. I can't. Nonstop, every scene. So... <laughs> Uh, I love this song that's playing. I didn't um, catch the name of the artist. I didn't Google it or anything. But one of the lyrics is, you turned a soft bitch solid. And I said, yes. (laughs) And then it was like, I got real bitch problems. Yes, real bitch problems. I tried to to Shazam it and nothing came up. (laughs) So clearly this is an indie artist we're going to get put on to. Hopefully we'll find out if Issa or somebody releases the playlist. But... She is heading out the door and she sees this massive stain still on the wall, you know, from the party. And she's she's looking at it like, I'm going to do something about that One shit. Day. But she leaves the house and she sees a noise violation on her door. And then she looks around and everybody has a noise <laughs> violation on their door. And to me, that was an instant red flag. I said, "Uh uh-oh, new management company. And all of a sudden, everybody's gentrification gentrification is coming. We know how that works. We're both from Harlem. Bunch of noise violations means eventually we can kick you out and then move rich white people in and triple the rent. What happened? (laughs) (laughs) So I said, "Uh "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. Oh, I know this dirty (laughs) trick. I know this shit right here. <laughs> well, considering your noise violation. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or uh, as an excuse to not renew your lease or whatever. So yep. I said, mm But nope. the fact that every door had it took right. me down. Right. All of them. Like, you niggas are loud. Chill out. <laughs> but she bumps into this new guy, Eddie, mm-hmm. who we have not, I think, had real conversation with before. Right. I think he was like, at the party. Yeah. Right? He mentioned he being at the party. He was like, man, your shit was lit. So right. fuck that. Mm-hmm. But. I saw those signs and I said, no, white people are a coming. <laughs> Y'all better get ready. <laughs> Not a coming, Crystal. <laughs> so meanwhile, uh, Molly and Lil Rel, whose name is Quentin. Lil Rel, what's up? And the Chicago boss are all on FaceTime and or whatever the on Skype, job I think. equivalent yeah, is. Right. right. And so I guess based off of the conversation they were having, Quentin is also based in Chicago or maybe he was based in New York. I couldn't really tell. But she made fun of whatever he called the beach. Oh, and I know people on the West I'm Coast are real uppity about their beaches. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So I'm thinking if a New Yorker says, oh, I'm going to the beach, they'd be like, Ugh. Right. Do not call Is that a pond in them Central dirt Park? lots y'all have <laughs> <laughs> beaches. That's how they act. So. And he was hyped to get some sun. So yeah. I'm thinking that definitely could have been New York. But they had a cute little rapport going on. You know, nothing overtly flirtatious or anything like that. Just, you know, two black people joking back and forth. You yeah. Know. And he even put on the slave voice. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't let them, don't let them see him. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them catch you. Right. Whatever. So that was cute. Yeah. It was a really cute 
baby mama. That's okay. Maybe Molly and Quentin. Oh, okay. maybe you know, because when you based in Chicago, you can go to New York or L.A. Hello, I didn't Ch- even think of that. See? I feel like the producers and the writers are setting up Chicago as like a prime hole location. Oh, or you what can get if- to anywhere in the country. <laughs> No more six-hour flights for you, girl. (laughs) Oh, my God. You're making me think they're going to move Molly to Chicago. Well, I think Molly is going to go to Chicago at least part-time. At some point, yeah. yeah. I think she is. And she talks about going later in the episode uh, to meet up with the boss lady. But we'll get there. So Issa and Frida are at East 41st Street. Oh, boy. And on the one hand, things are great because there are kids just pouring into this classroom. But Frida is like... Where are the Frida amigos and the amigas? <laughs> Demographic? We're finally getting consistent numbers. Yeah, but the numbers are all... They're black. Is this the um, gotcha thing? Yes, it is. Welcome. Uh, if you need a place to study or you need tutoring. Mr. Gainson, is, he said you had extra space. Yes, we do. But do you have any friends or like... Amigos, amigas. Okay, listen, why don't you find a seat and we'll be buying a few to see how we can help. So the thing about Frida is she has the best intentions, but when she asked that little black child, <laughs> do you have any amigos? Did you see Issa's face? She turned She's around like, like girl, are you crazy? What is this? Right, so the kids are coming in, which is fantastic, but they're all black. And Frida points out, you know, the school is 87% Latino. So the right. fact that that is not reflected in this is a problem, which is true. Right. But Issa points out, listen, you know, a few weeks ago, we were about to get canceled and pulled out of the school altogether. I mean, they had kids stealing their food and shit. Right. So she's like, take the win, shit about Frida. We got take y'all. the win. <laughs> right. Take the W, girl. We got kids in the building. You know, we can work on racist Mr. Gaines later. That's right. kind of what I got from that. But Frida seems so just conflicted. So Mr. Gaines is, is trying to look out for us? Yeah. Yeah, he is. And at least now we have students we can actually help. It's not that I'm not happy that we have more kids, but the school's 86% Latino, and the attendance doesn't reflect that. Frida, we have to start somewhere, all right? I don't know why you're trying so hard to turn our success into failure, but just take the W. Hey! Like, I get the feeling she doesn't sleep well behind what's going on. Yeah, she's, like, taking it really hard. And she even, she brought up Mr. Gaines. She was like, is he the reason that this is switched now right. and he's the one helping us all of a sudden yeah and now like yeah sudden, he's just, the one helping us yeah he like, is girl yes he is pumping these black kids into the room and the bad part about that is he is like deliberately only pumping the black kids right. into the room right but i think Issa's looking at it like look we could do some really great work at this school i just want to stay so let's do whatever we can to stay right but you know, Frida's just really, she's conflicted, man. She just is like, but it's not right. <laughs> and she's really bothered, like, her face yeah. the whole time. I yeah. mean, and she has a she has a good point. So hopefully we're going to see, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll see Issa and Frida, like, team up and push back against Mr. Gaines later or kind you of. You think? Because I feel like Issa really just doesn't care. Yeah, I think, I think deep down Issa knows Frida has a really good point. Right. But she just wants to... She doesn't want to be wrong. She doesn't want to prove her coworkers right about this school or whatever. And she wants to be successful. She right. wants to show that she can actually do the work. When And when your love life is falling apart, you might as well pour everything into work. And you so, need something to work She's out. like, I can't take an L right now. <laughs> like Jadena told Molly last season, you look like you needed a win. Oh, my God. I Remember that, that cold-hearted ass line? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like bitch I need my wins wherever I can get them right now and the boss did also give her that final warning remember yeah, she, was like, she was like if it doesn't I'm gonna turn around one right. time and then that's it we gotta let it go so, so I get we'll it. see maybe Frida will stage her own all out protest and I cannot <laughs> wait to see it if she does but meanwhile Lawrence is at his job and I noticed that he there is no there are literally no other black people. Yeah, it was just him. And I guess in startup land that is probably in very the tech common. Field, right. right. Yeah, in tech, especially if he's out uh I guess closer to the Bay Area now, or I don't really know where he lives, if it's still in the LA area. But I'm sure that it is that way at a lot of different startups and tech companies. But it was just like, wow, you right. really hmm. <laughs> All day long. With the nigga. guy eating the cricket <sighs> chips. They're not chips. <laughs> oh. I'm like, are you really eating freeze-dried crickets, though? <laughs> <Is> that- <laughs> White people will do anything to be paleo. 
<laughs> White people <laughs> refuse carbs <laughs> under all circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> and I know people were like, I wonder if Fran eats it. <laughs> no, I Fran's don't. like, they're gluten-free, sugar-free, <laughs> lots of protein, you guys. Become honey really roasted. Really clean eating. <laughs> no, I ain't that crazy. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so his coworkers are talking about Startup Saturday. Apparently, one of them got way too drunk and hooked up with the nigga who eats crickets. Right. So, <laughs> Startup Saturday Hard does times, sound man. fun. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. But Lawrence is like, nah, you know, I have to pick up some chairs. I already agreed to go to a family barbecue, which... I mean, it sounds whack. It sounded like <laughs> the biggest lie. He was like, "No, nah, I gotta um pick up chairs." They're like, "Bro, okay." I mean, if you if you wanted to just stay home, you could say that you did not have to do this. He's like, "No, it's a family barbecue." They're like, "Okay, it's just getting worse." Like, <laughs> and maybe I mean, so it sounded whack to me on one hand, like really a family. Like not your family barbecue, but like a barbecue as opposed to coming drinking with your I don't know, friends. right? Your yeah. friends, but at the same time, black barbecues be lit. So <laughs> if you at the Good right, food, if you at the music. right function, right <laughs> liquor, weed, spades. <laughs> So it's fun, you know. So I thought, you know, maybe. And I, I thought it was kind of cute too that he's like, nah, like. I'm basically chilling with my girl. He didn't mm-hmm. say it, yeah, but no. you know, I was like, okay, he's really trying to put Tasha as a priority. Mm. That was kind of interesting at that point. Yeah, well, I didn't at think that, that was that cute. Point. I was like, gross. <laughs> Ew. We're not prioritizing the bounce back. Ooh. We don't do that. Have, <laughs> not the rebound. I be having faith. <laughs> oh, Fran, the eternal <laughs> optimist. Meanwhile, Molly is on the phone with her mom, which yes. is kind of cute to hear her side of their conversation. And she's like renewing that, renewing yeah. her vows, apparently. She's like, Mama, you, you can wear your glasses. Daddy knows that you can't see. <laughs> he knows that you wear glasses, girl. What do you mean? Super cute. It's really adorable. She's picking up this bookcase that she ordered. And shout out to CB2 because I actually had the same bookcase. So when okay. I saw them, I died. Was I was like, like I that. <laughs> <laughs> Too cute. Yes, and I did put it together myself. <laughs> yeah, go ahead dear friend <laughs> so the guy at the delivery I don't know FedEx or something like that asks if he should give the bookcase to the man behind her she's like oh I actually don't no I'm alone no I'm, I'm by myself in these heels and I got it you know she instantly it instantly goes into the I don't need no help mm-hmm. You ain't nobody gotta help that me with big this big ass box though but, right I'm like, watching my in these heels on top of that and where did that fit in her car right <laughs> I don't know how she got that in the car, but as she's wrestling it down the stairs and gets it over to her car, she sees that that black guy is with a white girl and he just handles, you know, her box for her puts and it in the puts trunk, it in the trunk. And now we're getting smiling and not sweating or anything. <laughs> <laughs> not like, God damn it. When they get home, she's go, he's going to put it together. No worries. Whatever's in there. She ain't got to worry about it. And you could just see Molly looking like, hmm. <laughs> She's like, all right. So she can have it, but I can't? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the wheels start turning for her again. I don't know, though. I think Molly is kind of at a place where she, where she's ready to try something new and not necessarily. Yeah, and I thought she had kind of left it all alone when she was saying in the first episode to Issa, like, I'm not thinking about none of that. I'm just trying to focus on myself yeah. and work it out. But but then she saw this dude with a white girl flat. and was like, Yeah, that triggered mm, her right there. Still Took it back. Just Kind of makes me mad. (laughs) (laughs) Which I know a lot of women who are like that and have those moments periodically. And I just be like, I get it, sis. You know, have your moment. Right. Have your moment because it can feel hard out here sometimes. But especially when you're carrying a heavy ass box. Especially when you're trying to put together your own damn bookcase. Groceries. So they are trying to put together the bookcase, Molly and Issa, at Molly's apartment. And. Neither one of them really know what they're doing. Issa's not trying. Issa just She's wants like, oh, to I'll drink. fill up the wine. You do that, and right. I'll do this. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I love it so much. But Molly is talking about how she's going to pause therapy because she feels like Dr. Renner, Renner something yeah, like that. Yeah, Renner. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. She feels like she's always putting her issues onto Molly. Or... Yeah. And did you agree with that? Not at all. Like, I'm like, I, I think she's just pushing you in a way that you don't feel totally comfortable with yet. Um, as far as sharing your real feelings and emotions and all that is concerned. But that comes with time. Yeah. So I felt like maybe this was a little bit premature for Molly to just be like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing it. But Issa says, you know, keep going, bitch. It's right? a lot she's... of brown titties in the city. <laughs> <laughs> you can find some She's more. So silly. 
And Molly's like, well, speaking of, you know, titties and such, there's dicks also, sis, and I don't see you with none. <laughs> Triggered. Okay. That's <laughs> real. But, you know, Issa's, Issa's having trouble with the whole getting back into the swing of things type of thing. And I get yeah, it. Yeah, she know? was saying that she gets nervous about if, if she's going to be good, right. if the guy's going to be gonna good. He's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. And all this stuff. And so she just says, you know what? We were supposed to have a whole phase. This is Molly. Molly's like, we were supposed to have a whole phase, you know, long time ago. Me but and you, you were supposed got, to go together, right. but you got in a relationship with, with Lawrence. Lawrence. So, bitch, now's the time. Hoes link up. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, I started it. wondering, do you think um, Molly got triggered by seeing the guy with the girl in the box? Because suddenly she gets home and she's like, fuck therapy. Hmm. Did well, that push her somewhere? I was wondering the connection, if there was one. Maybe. I don't think I thought about it like that. I think maybe, if anything, I would have thought her seeing the two of them like that would be like, you know, fuck it. I don't need these niggas. It's whatever. You know, I'm going to focus on me. I'm a bad bitch. I got all this. Right. I don't have to worry about settling down or anything like that. And Issa's kind of coming at it the same way, except from a... My feelings are really hurt, and I don't want to think about investing anything in anybody right now. So right. I'm going to just be out here and do whatever I want to do. she said, fuck feeling feelings. <laughs> fuck feeling fuck things. Fuck love. <laughs> I said, oh, you you are... So y'all are actually speaking to me right now? So y'all just going to write out my life? <laughs> no. Cool. Fuck feeling feelings. Let's go to the club, bitch. It's whole season. We out here. Next scene. She right got there. her best khaki dress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk about look at all these thoughts in here. Be a thirsty. And then a girl literally walks past <laughs> with her same the dress. exact <laughs> same clothes. She's asked Molly to, you know, teach her to hoe. <laughs> Molly was, you know, mildly offended, but Molly's like, like, rude. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so weird sometimes thinking about like Yvonne the actress. Right. And then Molly the character. She's like, yeah, girl, come on. <laughs> hoeing it's baby steps to this <laughs> but <laughs> they're in the club and i love the song that's playing it's you right by they i fucking mm. love that song so much the beat on that song is so hard but Issa is probably the worst flirt dude when she was doing the sexy walk first of all shout this out to Issa's legs walk. oh number one this is like, everything Damn. man she's fine as hell but <laughs> she's like this. i know she was being goofy in that scene but i was low-key like wow yes no cardio. body body <laughs> it's like I, you know wild yes she's built so but she looked great yeah it was really wild um the <laughs> molly's like hurry your ass up he's like this is not sexy well <laughs> and she tries to flirt with the construction worker like oh that sounds hard he's like no it's not. I'm dead at him putting the phone up to his right. ear and walking so, He was away. like, uh, and then walked off like, you could not fake it any worse than that. That's just so blatant. Like, please get out of my face and don't talk to me no and more. And you know shit is bad when you're being hypersexual to a dude and he's not right. even into it. And that happens in the very next scene <laughs> because Issa is talking to, you know, the dude at the bar talking about, if you was going to go home with somebody, would you be... Like home alone, or would it be somebody in here? And or like, who would be your choice? Unfortunately for her, dude was taking one for the team, taking one for and the just team. sat next to her, and then he couldn't take it no more. Being a great wingman, <laughs> but he took it a step too far when he was like, "Do you have any other friends?" Like, wait a minute, nigga. Now you might just be over here being a good homeboy or whatever, distracting me for a while. I respect it. <laughs> But don't ask me, do I have any other friends, motherfucker? We can sit here and be cordial <laughs> and have a drink. Why are you being mean? You don't have to be mean to her about he didn't it. He want to hear that shit. That That's was... what it was. He's like, get me out of this awkward <laughs> ass, uncomfortable ass conversation. Mm, no, I was offended for you. So like, oh, you don't have to be all that now. <laughs> so meanwhile, nostrils wide open. <laughs> He's just like immediately heart eye emoji all over And Molly. Molly's like, not really... I mean, she's kind of playing it cool. She is. I I was proud of her. I said, yes, that's my girl because you are the one who needs to slow down. So (laughs) she's being real cutesy about it. He asked for a number. She gives him her card. Like Kept the wall up real real early. No, nigga. No, (laughs) nigga. But he looks, Shoot me you know, an email on Outlook. He's like, don't worry about it. I right. got it. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to call you. <laughs> and then she goes back over to Issa. She's like, what you got? I got these wings. <laughs> I ordered, I actually ordered some wings. End scene. <laughs> <laughs> that is how the first night of the whole experiment went. Incredibly wrong. But, you know, 
every journey begins with a single step. Right. I'm still waiting to start my whole phase. I feel like it's coming. My friend Fatima was like, I'll coach you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> she was like, and you know, that worry. was my next question. Have you had a whole a phase? I have not. And so I felt Issa really strongly when she said that, because when I was in college and everybody around me was doing that, I was the square who was always in a relationship. Me too, man. <sighs> All that time we wasted. All no. that's in my youth. <laughs> oh. And My now prime. I'm like, how, how can I get started in this elderly age? <laughs> <laughs> See, I tried the whole phase, but it was a fail for me. Damn. Because I remember I went to a party and there was like this really fine ass like football player looking dude. I was like, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. perfect mm-hmm. for a whole phase. Mm-hmm. No shade. But I was like, he's perfect. Yeah. Started talking to him very early and clear that it was just like a physical thing. And then he caught feelings and started like being like, we should go bike riding. Oh, no, nigga. And I was like, it's only one type of exercise I want to do with you. (laughs) (laughs) And it was crazy because he was actually really great. And I was like, he'd be perfect to date. But the timing was not what I was looking for Mm because I didn't want to do him like Tasha. You know, I didn't want to do that. I do not want to touch you. You know, I didn't want to be at the family barbecues, right. bringing chairs and plugging in uh, stereos and speakers and shit. Mm. So huh. it was a fail for me. Well, I mean, you know, right place, right time is everything. It was really a fail for him because he's the one who caught feelings when early on it was established that this was a physical thing. So right, right. He missed out, I'm sure, friend. <laughs> you know, usually, but sometimes you just got to let these niggas know it is what it is and it's what I said it is. I set my boundaries. That's it. I was like, I'm not going set into your another damn, boundaries. damn relationship yes. this early on. So I had to kind of like back off and we ended up being friends. See? So and it wasn't I think- a lot. It was cool. I think Molly is doing that too. Like, let me not immediately dive right in, heart wide open to every right, man who and label this interest. right as something. Right. So, speaking of Tasha, she and Lawrence are laid up, and she's talking about her family. And Amy, this is mad because of the potato salad and all that. Got her hair wrapped. This and is everything. way too black. This is so authentic <laughs> right here. T- Tasha does have that hair wrapped. That's how I was like, uh oh, honeymoon phase is over. Oh yeah, real fast. <laughs> Lawrence started rubbing. It. She's got sweatpants on. Mm. Lawrence is rubbing on that leg and kissing her neck and she's like uh nigga but shark tank is still on the dvr uh uh tgit mm, shondaland you know what this is <laughs> mama is comfortable okay <laughs> and lawrence is looking like what happened to my 24 hour pussy machine he's like pierce nipples where you at what I happened mean. <laughs> what happened to the uh, uh. <laughs> no are we settling into into it's a relationship type shit. Looks Just like routine, it. Just routine, spending time together in the bed. You're not even trying to look sexy. I could be doing this with Issa. Right? <laughs> He's like, you trying to have a conversation and shit? Oh. See. Yeah. Right. And then you see his face shift Right. It does. It definitely does. And I said, hmm, Lawrence is about to be on the some tides fuck shit. turning. Yep. Here it goes. Meanwhile, Lawrence ain't getting none. Issa's also not getting none. She's at home <laughs> with this little by- vibrator. Because who hasn't been there? <laughs> But not looking through the phone. Because right. the me- the- I already know that phone ain't got that type of batteries. <laughs> Cordless phones don't have them good type of batteries. The battery dies on her vibrator. And she's like, I will take them out of anywhere. But the not smoke the detector. fire detector. The smoke detector, bro. <laughs> Niggas don't care. <laughs> we all know those ain't the same batteries. Girl, you got to get the type that plugs in or recharges. What are you doing? It's 2017. Oh, no, baby. <laughs> oh, no, baby. What are you doing? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> So God bless her. She's not going to be getting none tonight, just like Lawrence. (laughs) Molly is at work the next day talking to the white boy, Travis. That's his name, right? Is it? Trevor? Travis? Something like that. One of those. Look at us. (laughs) Mr. T. Reverse racism. (laughs) (laughs) And she's talking about how she'll be in Chicago the next week to work on some stuff with um, the lady boss, whose name I really should have I think it's Hannah. I think. She had a whole going away party and everything. Right? What is wrong with, with us? A cake. <laughs> I think it's Hannah. I think. So she, um, but she is talking about going out to Chicago the next week, and he says, "Oh, I wish I could just, you know, bullshit and go on a little vacation to Chicago." And she's like, "Well, nigga, you vacation at work every day." So and he was hurt. He was, you and she apologized. Like, okay. She even apologized, which I felt like I have been in that situation so many times in the workplace with white men. Where I say something that you know I kind of mean, but it's in a joking way. But you didn't think they were going to take the it same that way hard. that they do, though. They mm-hmm. say that, and we're supposed the to just laugh it off as a joke, and it's supposed to be oh ha ha. And if you complain about it, you're being too sensitive or whatever else. Not in the reverse, but though. you do it to the reverse. And she even apologized, and he was like, uh. 
and yeah, walked off with the way he walked, feelings. Yeah, right. the way he walked off, I was like, uh oh, I'm sensing so some this pettiness. White man about is about to, to you know, yeah, he sensed it. So you can joke about how you don't really want to work that much and all this, but if I say all you do is vacation at work, now you mad? Or the fact that she's clearly telling him about extra work she's taking right. on, and he's like devaluing it by being like, must be nice having vacations in Chicago. Right. And so she has to try to make him feel better and smooth over his little hurt ass feelings while knowing that she makes less than he does and works harder. Oh my God. Oh that many. is so many black women's position in the corporate workplace. That's so many And the women. fact that she knows how much he makes, that's just right. like the burn to That's it. just his regular ass check. And she was looking at it like, is it Christmas and Hanukkah? <laughs> <laughs> is everything rolled into this? <laughs> <Not Hanukkah. laughs> All of it. So his feelings are hurt. And I, I, when I saw him walk away, I said, that's going to come back. You saw it. He gave her. He he gave her that walk away. Like, mm-hmm. hi. Yeah, you'll be in Chicago too, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get all these bitches in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Issa's also at work with Frida at We Got Y'all and their boss is thrilled because she's gotten yes, off the phone with Mr. Like, Games. you did it, Issa. I'm proud of you, girl. You were right. We just needed to stick in there and hang in. But Frida's like, have you talked to anybody other than Mr. Games? <laughs> but his ass. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, girl, I haven't. But, you know, everybody's really happy. The kids are showing up. I'm proud of you guys. And Issa says, well, you know, couldn't have done it without Frida. And Frida's like, yeah, you could have. And he could not have been more excited about the progress we're making at East 41st Street. Um, Mm -hmm. Just curious, have you gotten feedback from anyone else? No, but Mr. Gaines did say attendance in your classroom has doubled. It has, and it's beautiful. (laughs) All right then, well done. Anissa, I gotta hand it to you. You were right to hang in there. Oh, well, it was a team effort. And I couldn't have done it without Frida. You totally could have. Uh, things happen without me all the time. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, keep it up. Frida yeah. is really... She is really hurt, man. Tapped out of this whole thing. It, it, it almost disturbs me because that character is all... She always seems just so happy yeah you know, like even let's just killed. do the best for the world right. right so to see her so upset i feel like it must be affecting Issa's character also right like i think she feels well, i think she's starting point, to feel a little yeah. more like she's really this isn't just some you know whatever Fly thing emotion, right like yeah. you're gonna have to really talk to this white girl about her feelings or maybe talk to mr Gaines and be like hey so and try to fix the program yeah we know how you feel about latinos but we would like to serve the kids <laughs> about taco meat because he's so oh god that was so fucked it. up <laughs> huh, so we're gonna see where that goes molly and lionel <laughs> <laughs> are on a date and he's looking all good smiling that nice smile when niggas got nice they teeth. both had nice ass just, teeth that's what i noticed on that sit here and be fine and he's pulling a me sharing photos of his niece i'm that same way with my nephew like oh look at my baby <laughs> oh look here he is in a hat so cute <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying but they start talking about kids and how you know it's great to have some for a little while and then give them back to their parents which yes right so true we can all relate yes <laughs> like oh your four-year-old is so fun take for him like back 45 minutes <laughs> and then he's gotta go <laughs> but i was really proud of molly in this scene because she was Me so too. laid back mm-hmm. usually she's the one that's like putting the pressure on and kind of coming on strong but i noticed she was chilling right laughing having like a genuine time mm-hmm. even when the scene was like finishing up we saw that little smile yeah it kind of seemed like she was like i may have struck gold you know what i mean at least that's I how may i read have. it yeah in that moment even well, though we see differently later i think my first thought when he said was do you ever wish that you could just fast forward to the married and happy part i thought on the one hand i'm really glad that he is being so honest about his feelings for her and being like forthright with them because i think that's really important yeah on the other hand i think people who are already talking on the first date about don't you just wish you could skip to being married are like not the people for me because i absolutely do not want to do that (laughs) I do not want to fast forward to the part where I'm just married and that's it. Oh, no. the part where he said, I'm glad we were able to skip the first date. I was confused. Like, I was like, you know, you did so not... this isn't that? So y'all feel like you feel like y'all are already in a relationship. That part threw me off. Yes. That was so a little said, bit of a red flag. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he meant, you know, let's just skip the whole awkwardness of most first dates where it's like, 
you talk and I talk. And, and that, it's like, you know, trying to figure, aspect. right. Yeah. Maybe he means, you know, we're just so warm with each other. And See, in that, that scene, I mean, I, what I like about it is that people are going to interpret it in so many different ways mm-hmm. based on like Their where you are right, right now. Right. Because for <laughs> me, I thought it was cool in the sense that one thing I'm working on as someone who is like going to start dating again soon, you know, I just like cleared out a past relationship is that I do appreciate a man that is clear with his intentions and what he wants. Like put it out yeah, there, say it. Absolutely. If you're on the marriage track, I should know that. Yeah. If you're on the whole phase, I should know that. Mm-hmm. Like just, just talk about it right. like adults. So I thought that was dope. And I also was like, but the, he is coming a little strong. Mm. I think for me, it was like, I do also appreciate, you know, are yeah. you relationship minded or are you just here for some sex? Like, because Let's I feel like if more men table. would just be open about that, they would find themselves in fewer sticky situations. But less time wasted on both ends. The thing is, if you are marriage minded, I don't need to be with you <laughs> because I am not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I am at all. I have almost no interest in partnering permanently with somebody. Really? So, yeah, mm, no, friend, I'm not trying to hear that. See, with me, I'm starting to be open to it. I never liked mm. it. My biggest thing, I always used to say, I don't want to be contractually obligated to yes. another human. Like, that freaked me out. Yes. But, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but now, I'm shifting. Okay. Well, yeah. That is so, so here, nice. <laughs> you're like, cool for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because, you know, I was very marriage minded. Oh, yeah. you know, not like I must get married. Not like Molly with like, you no, know, no, no, her not eyes like on a, the prize. Right. But just, a checklist. But just I like if assumed, it feels that way. Yeah, yeah. I always thought, you know, I'll get married one day. I'll get married. And now I'm like, Fuck probably that. not. <laughs> but I can still be out here and have fun. You know, yeah, totally. I can still be out here and have a good time. I don't have to love these niggas. Right. That's all I'm it's so weird. Issa said, fuck feelings. I was just like. You're is like, there a tattoo? Right is there a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> is there a wristband for the club? <laughs> so Lawrence is at this family barbecue dragging these chairs. My lord, he is in it. He is a full yeah. grown boyfriend. He at this is, point. I'm like, this is Bay situation. So first of all, it's a family barbecue. You knew that. That means you're going to be meeting her family. Why the play is that uncle, happening? The cousin, he done uh, pushed the aunt <laughs> in, the, in the wheelchair out the van. He made, this is like as soon as he gets there. The the play uncle is, you know, probably like most of our play uncles. And even the phrase play uncle, I said, again, this show is so fucking black. <laughs> I know white people are like, play What is it? What uncle. is that? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just Google that real quick. <laughs> And then the cousin is like, oh, you wanted them rule following ass, nigga. Yeah, that part took me down. <laughs> and then he called later. He was like, rules. Hey, rules. That was so <laughs> that funny. That is so damn true. <laughs> Everyone has that cousin. Oh. <laughs> it's me. Uh, Chris is like, me. I that's mean, me. I don't. So the thing, my thing about music is like, if I'm trying to play a game or have a conversation, I just don't want all that extra loud shit. Right. Like, so y'all going somewhere, turn it down or something, something. <laughs> But that part about the rules was hilarious. He pushing a Mimi out of the van and then the kids run by and almost hit him. And he looks up and he's like, oh, no. He totally snapped out of Tasha in that moment. Absolutely. You just saw it. Like, he's like, what the fuck am am I doing? What what am I doing? Why am I around all these people and I barely even know this girl? Then his coworkers. So then Brooke texts. Right. We'll be here for a while. They gave him that out. I said, oh, he's out, bitch. His lying ass (laughs) talking about I got to work. Well, I guess he wasn't technically lying. No, he wasn't. It is a work thing. I got a work thing. And really, had he gone for like an hour and come back. Right. Would have been fine. But of course he did. We'll get there. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> Damn so, it, Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence is going to start up Saturday. Molly is at a bakery and she runs into her friends. I think Dro and Candace are their names. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was so funny that Candace is like, you still wearing them ugly colors. <laughs> and Molly's like, you would be a hating ass Delta, wouldn't you? <laughs> Greek shade. Because that is how they do. All well day. into adulthood. <laughs> and I love it. I'll never get tired of it. <laughs> so again, authentically Negro right. with this show. I want to draw. Hey, Candace. Hey, girl. <laughs> I see you are still trying to work those ugly colors. But you're cute, though. Ah, uh, okay. You know what? I didn't even wear this on purpose, but... 
like a Delta to hate. Mm. <laughs> Thought y'all just gonna roll to my cupcake spot and not tell anybody you went down. Oh, uh, that's my fault. Uh -huh. He was only supposed to be in town on business for a few hours, but I wanted to tag along and turn it into a weekend. <laughs> yeah, and we coming up here again next weekend, right? Mm -hmm. For a kissing grind. You going? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll ask Ethan. Oh, uh, and you still ordering one for your friend at home? Bro, she only needs one for you. You shut up. How do you even put up with this? He's a fool idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she chose the right one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for my cupcake. And, you know, they're doing the whole happy couple thing in front of her face. And, oh, he was only supposed to be here for a day, but I just had to tag along. Right. And make it a theme. But Molly wasn't jealous. She wasn't. It wasn't the that usual, me. Mm, hating bitches. You know, even when she was walking out and she kind of looked back and smiled like, oh, Love, yeah, like I'm happy know? for them. Like these are my friends. Never seen Molly do that. They've all they've clearly known each other for a long time. Cause Joe's like, you know, tell your brothers I said hey or whatever. So it's clearly been a thing where they've all been cool for a while. But right. yeah, normally we see Molly's character kind of being like, mm. right, niggas is happy. Like and when I'm she not. was cold in the Ugh. bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm really proud of her. Good for her. Issa's painting the kitchen wall over. Finally getting rid of that uh, massive burn, <laughs> stain, whatever. And she spills some paint on herself. So she goes over to the kitchen sink to wash it off. And she sees How Eddie tiny. laying out by the pool. Right. Boy. She's like, okay, Eddie. Like a Jagged Edge music video. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? He's out there with his wife beater on. Yeah. So Molly calls and updates her on, you know, brunch with Lionel. So she's saying, you know, Lionel's great. He's got all these great qualities. He's got money. He's fine. This, this, this. But he just seems like he's checking off boxes, you know, like he's just trying to get into a relationship and then and next and next. like and who, who does, does that sound like damn bitch i want to do i know somebody like that, that. high-pitched fakeness what you mean they all sound excited about him lionel is great we want a lot of the same things i mean he got a five-year plan he's attractive he's smart he's making money but but i just don't know what it is it's like on paper he's amazing but i don't know well what don't you know it's like with drawing handers. I just ran into them at the cupcake shop. Oh, which two did you get? Bitch, who cares? Chocolate and caramel. Yes. But the point is, like, Drove didn't have no five-year plan. Hell, he didn't even have a five-day plan. <laughs> yeah, Drove was a mess. Right, but he just went with the flow. He found the perfect person. With Lionel, I feel like he was just checking off his boxes. Get into a relationship. Check. Hmm. What? He sounds kind of like you. I was out there like that? Issa. Issa. No, girl, I think I passed out real quick from these paint fumes. Bitch, open So I think Molly realizes right then, like, oh, the shit. thing that puts you off is the thing that other people have been put off by in you. And by your ass. Like, you're perfect on paper, but you are so desperate for the relationship part of it, and you really... To the point where you want to just get there. Right. And whoever you can find that can kind of, like, go along the ride with you is fine. As opposed to finding the person that you really want to grow and develop and that relationship with. with yeah, right? organically. And it seems like the two of them get along. You know, they get each other's humor, which is so important. And somebody in this insecurity hashtag last week pointed that out. Um, that that was part of the thing with Lawrence and Issa. You know, they get each other's humor. He came over right. and he was like, what happened to Frank Ocean? You know, like right. they get each other's jokes and that sort of familiarity can really help you build a but relationship. That's what surprised me that Molly is turned off by him because she wants to get married, though. And she's kind of on this similar fast track. And then he on paper. Yeah. He like seems she like said, great yeah, guy. he knocks off all of her own checklists. So I was actually kind of surprised, to be honest, that. She's turned off by a checklist when she's had her checklist. I thought they would just be like, yes, mm. you know? Yeah, no, I think she's realizing I don't want to act like that anymore. anymore. Like being like that is how I ended up in this position where I felt really low. And so I don't want to do that. And so those behaviors in him, I just I'm going to avoid, you know, that whole situation entirely, which I think is pretty brave of her. But we don't get there just yet because <laughs> she's talking to Issa and Issa has damn near passed out. <laughs> That part was, I was like, what? It was so funny. She just She's all respond. slumped over. <laughs> I was like, are you serious right now? Molly said, bitch, open the window. <laughs> She's like, ooh. <laughs> you right. You right. <laughs> but here's one question I do have, though. Okay. Because this is something that I'm working on, too. 
sometimes we can be uh, comfortable being challenged in relationships. And sometimes when you meet the nice guy who isn't presenting any kind of challenge or any kind of chase, mm -hmm. we get turned off because you're almost used mm -hmm. to. And then you, you, how many times have you been like, so-and-so is too nice? Oh, so I have never been one of those girls. No, <laughs> no, too I nice. Have. But friend, we know, we know you, you had a thug type. <laughs> We know you had a, if he ain't got six felonies, don't <laughs> ask for my number. I'm dead. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. But this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Friends, like, I'm recovering. <laughs> you know, no I'm just making me laugh because I was with uh, two friends of ours and the, this weekend and we were talking about men I date. And he was like, do you like the, like, locks and incense type i was like no, no. more on the like little uzi <laughs> side if we talk <laughs> those kind of locks <laughs> no but no but all jokes aside i i was like is it that she is used to having to chase and mm. now that a guy is actually not giving her anything to chase she's turned off hmm. maybe i think i just assumed that it was her saying, that is a behavior that I want to get away from, and I just see it in off. you, so I'm just done. Right. right. But we'll see. Meanwhile, Startup Saturday is actually lit. <laughs> no surprise. Right, but he's still the only black dude. Yeah, but, you know, Lawrence is striking me as the type who don't really give a shit about that right. sort of thing. Yeah, you know, like, as long as it's a good chill. time, it's a good time. Yeah, and he's having fun. He got comfortable. Like, you know, I mean, I'm supposed to go back, but... Mm. Right. He was about to leave, though, but then the cute waitress <laughs> pops up and she's kind of gives him a face like... Yeah, he, he was going to decline a drink and then he says, you know, I'm going to be leaving soon. She's like, that's too bad. And right then he <laughs> went into full fuck nigga mode. <laughs> He Yo, like, ain't it crazy how that activates so fast? Immediately. Yo. He didn't think twice. He was like, oh, oh, you don't want me to go? In that case... <laughs> tequila shots for everybody <laughs> all it took was a, a bus ride from the park One to the party time i'm like wow nigga that fast that fast now i'm no fan of tasha's and i would not have agreed to go to her family barbecue in the first damn place yeah and had i gone i probably would have ditched also for a little while but if you know that it's the context of like meeting her family and all that and everybody like you're being introduced to people it's not like this is my friend so right. to do her like that i was just like mm. i mean it's on both of them though because why are you bringing people around your family why this quick are, now listen friend i'm trying he to be nice because i'm so you mean to this girl his ex. he just what was it yes, like last friend, week do it <laughs> last week yes. and now you're meeting my play uncle for what girl no for what too fast so, yeah there's a lot going on there but lawrence definitely makes the decision to stay instead of going back and starts to drink it and there you, then now i'm like oh it's really oh, it was over. a wrap yeah because he drove himself mm -hmm. so if he's drinking he's probably not gonna just jump right in the car and leave so and hmm. the co-worker said it gets lit once it gets after lit dark, right so, so lord god <laughs> bless sasha isa finishes the wall and it looks really nice it's cute in she her kitchen missed the spot and she looks up at the ceiling and says <laughs> you won't take my joy <laughs> I took me down because I be talking You cannot like that. have my joy. I'm going to get some white paint and I'm going to handle that another day. <laughs> That's me on Twitter every day. <laughs> I came on this app to talk about aloe juice and apple cider vinegar. And you bitches. <laughs> no, friends. Stage in the timeline. <laughs> I was here to talk about yoga poses. <laughs> and how stretching can help your menstrual pain. Uh, I love that line, though. That was classic. Yeah, that's a great one, because I have said that too many times. <laughs> like, you won't do it. I am accomplished, and I'm proud of myself. Right. So she sees Eddie walk into his apartment from the pool. What's up with this, though, right? And she's like, like, okay. You know, I think she's feeling empowered. I feel she finished the wall. I didn't need nobody's help. I see this nigga. I've been looking at him. You know, I'm going to go over there. So she <laughs> thinks real fast, takes the charger out of the wall, and goes down to Eddie's house. Yo, she scammed that so fast, though. I was she like, did. I wouldn't even have thought of that. She came up real with it real fast. So she just <laughs> walks right on up and is like, hey, did you leave my char did you leave your charger in my house? And he's, he's lying like, ass talking about, yeah, yes. Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> right. Thank you for that. So, But then again, I was like, you never have too many chargers. I probably would have said yes. I too. have four chargers. <laughs> right. So it's very possible I did leave one at your house. Could have been. Because I have a lot. 
<laughs> but I think you gotta stay connected. You know what I mean? I mean, the nigga saw an opening and he took it. And I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not dealing with you and you're connected. <laughs> Uh, but he invites her in to smoke. Like, you smoke? And she says, I love it. Which is a, a clear said, sign that you do not smoke. <laughs> Who says that? Nobody. <laughs> if she smoked, she would have came over with the charger. No, with a blunt instead of a charger. Or Easy. with both of them. Right. And been like, you free? <laughs> She's so cute. I love her so much. Lawrence is still at Startup Saturdays having real My fun. My gosh. <laughs> it's been all day at this point i'm like but how you just dip on tasha's barbecue and really not hit her right it was fucked up oh so i think that was actually after the whole part where he um declines the drink and then buys the other round and all that tasha's texting all that happens after Issa is at the apartment oh okay oh boy she is at the apartment though and eddie is watching The world-renowned gossip girl. <laughs> this whole scene. This whole scene. Talking about white people doing their thing. All of this dialogue, friend. <laughs> it had me crying. Talking about, is that the white girl? Oh, I guess they're all white. <laughs> if, you've, if you've ever dated a thug Yoda, yeah. this scene was very dear, <laughs> dear to like, your heart. You're white like, people. It's good to see them doing their thing. <laughs> Like, what have they not? I scream. Oh, so shout out to Gossip Girl and Chill. <laughs> Issa has one of her rap fantasies right there. And it's all about, bitch, you should just go for it. Because, and this is honestly, women should write this down. Even if it's whack, you can still get some head. And if the nigga cannot finesse some head, then you don't ever need to call him again. Legendary. <laughs> so she says, go for it. Go for it. Ho. Put your doubts to the side. Get his ass in the bed. Even if it's whack, you can still get some head. Go for it. Go for it. Go. Ho for it. Ho for it. Ho. Do you want that dick or no? You better go for it. Go for it. Ho. And literally does and almost breaks the man's what? teeth. I said, <laughs> okay, now sis, I'm with you. The enthusiasm, I love it. <laughs> but she literally just like Aim, launches Issa. herself at this. Aim, Issa. <laughs> And so begins, like, the most clumsy, awkward... That, it literally took them, like, 45 minutes. It, oh, God. Watching them fumble with zippers He's and like buttons. He's, like, slowly and... taking off his beater. And then she's like, all right, okay, I got it. Okay, don't you just... Then her jeans have buttons. <laughs> then he asked if he could titty fuck her. She respectfully I declines. I cried, friend. <laughs> Was, who asked that though I would, I would like to respectfully decline <laughs> he says okay thank you for being respectful <laughs> if this were if this wasn't the most awkward sex scene of all time it's like he, I, it's i think it's realistic because everybody doesn't have you know the movie perfect you know passionate you're like throw slamming. your clothes off yeah, and everything true. is just you know sometimes people knock into each other or you can't get them jeans off because bitch why did you wear tapered <laughs> jeans to go have sex what did you put on it that all for you know <laughs> and uh, once again I so I noticed this uh, uh, in a couple of the other sex scenes throughout this season, but it doesn't look like he puts a condom on. You know, if you check the hashtag, people kept bringing that up. If you check insecurity, mm. people were like, "Where are the condoms? Where are the condoms? Where's the mention of prophylactics?" And I was like, "I don't, I don't, know. I don't know." So I I'm wondering, is this going to set up a itchy and scratchy situation oh for later God, in the you're season? Right. Maybe so, or a pregnancy scare, or whose baby is it? I don't know. So, or maybe it's assumed that they're using condoms, and that part just isn't shown. Right? But I don't know. I don't know. That's hard to call. But this is like the third or fourth sex scene with nobody putting a condom on, and I'm like, People are we just... really smashing randoms <laughs> raw out here? Is that what we're doing? Because I'm all for a hoe phase, but not an unprotected hoe phase. No. Yeah, and I think when you're in a relationship for years, you can probably really easily get out of the habit of being like, oh, condoms every time. Yeah, of course. That's right. the only problem. But, I mean, yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> and clearly y'all have been too. Right. So the initial position with her legs all the way up, she keeps her head, keeps banging into the headboard and it's not working out. The headboard slash shelf. <laughs> right. And so it's starting to look like this is just not going to happen again for her. But then they figure it out. But she did look pleased by his size. She did. did you see her face? She yeah, was she's like, like oh, okay, oh, okay. I this see ain't gonna you, be Eddie. 
Little Ain't Eddie gonna be a waste of my Eddie. time. Yeah. <laughs> so they figure it out, and you know the seated position and all this, and Issa's getting it in, and I'm like, well, all right. Then, I love girl. that though that she was like, I'm not feeling this, so we're gonna yeah. switch positions. I'm gonna get on top and get my rock. And off. I don't know what it, I mean. I do know why men love that position so much, but like, cause lazy. <sighs> That's hard work, though. <laughs> That's core work. <laughs> you be tired after five minutes. Like, Friends like, no, switch. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Molly's at home letting white people put together her bookshelf. Smart girl. Dead. And Lionel texts her offering to go to SZA. Like, you know, I have tickets. Do you want to go see SZA tomorrow? And I'm thinking, bitch, yes. Right? But she turns him down. She's just like, mm, she's mm, over mm, it. Yeah. And then he mentions dinner on Monday and she don't even text back. She's just like, mm mm. And she jadenned him. She did. Oh my God. Table She turned. did jaden him. And one thing I appreciate, appreciate about people who will not text you or hit you back is that they're saying i don't want to pursue something with you and i don't want to just hang out with you and make you think that that's where this is going when it isn't mm, it's, but it's so mean it's not, what, well it's so what, icy. What, what, what is the nicest way to say i don't want to hang out with you just like that so it's nicer or maybe to, just be like listen i have to keep it i have to be real with you i'm actually not interested in mm. any of this i just think ignoring text is so spitting in my face or ignoring a text wow Oh, same thing <laughs> really yo it's a respect thing like, damn like, i just you you saw my text you really are not gonna say anything back oh no i guess i just don't really give much of that shit about text messages Chris was like i eat those <laughs> is it because you do it to i mean i've just started <laughs> I, I'm like three no, weeks Crystal, into my, don't I don't give people. a fuck. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Cause so fuck feelings. I don't give a shit how you feel. That is so mean. Nobody told you to like me. How about that? <laughs> how about that? <laughs> Nobody did that. You chose to do that. Now you're going to have people stopping me in the street. Like, yo, can you tell Crystal <laughs> to text me back? <laughs> First of Can you all, tell Crystal to text niggas me back, better not. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I think, you know, hmm. She should. You're right. The mature thing to do is to say he was nice though. He yeah, they like had a, a good time. An asshole treated yeah. her with respect, which is why I think the least she could have done is just kept it real. Yeah. Lately, when I've cut people off and been like, "Oh, I'm just not responding to your text anymore," it's because they said or did something that was a turn off that really made me uncomfortable or pissed me off or something like I've already told you this once. And one thing I'm really not doing is repeating myself to these niggas no more. Like when a dude says, "Send me a picture," and you just oh met God. that will get ignored. what is that. <laughs> I have a whole ass Instagram. Go to my Instagram. There are so many pictures of me. <laughs> They're like, but I want one that's for me. There no. are none for you. <laughs> I'm going to send you one for my Instagram. This is my face. What you mean for you? <laughs> it's a fucking photo. Yo, literally nothing turns me off faster. I hate that so much. Than a dude saying, send me a I picture. I hate that so much. And I feel like. <laughs> Look, and my heart's beating fast Other right women now. don't hate it the way I do. <laughs> I think we all secretly hate it, though. <laughs> If he's cute enough or cool enough, you might be like, ugh, but no. Usually if they're cute enough or cool enough, they're not worried about... They're not asking you that yeah, shit. They're, they're just like, let's hang. They're too so cool for that. Right. I would rather look at your face than show all my homeboys this <sighs> selfie of you. <sighs> but what the pet fuck peeves. ever. <laughs> right. Date, dating Getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> so Lawrence in this very next scene is full on drunk at this point. I think everybody is. And he's telling the girls at work his app idea. And I'm thinking, uh oh, they're about to take that. Oh shit. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. Oh, I was no. like, oh, you are a fucking fool. So oh, you just no. you just gave them like karma them, bit him in the ass. You know, so we'll see how that develops. But uh at that point, Tasha calls. She's done texting. And I said, oh, this nigga's in trouble now. Shit. He is in trouble now. He actually has to go outside to talk because he can't even hear her in the bar. <laughs> Which is fucked up because, you know, she's like, what the fuck? Right. So she's like, what is that base? In what the, the hell even happened to you? And that's when her cousin is like, is that rules? <laughs> hey, what's up, rules? <laughs> <laughs> which is sad because he ghosted her after he just met his, her family yeah. so now she's looking extra crazy right because he's like you know I ended up at this work thing and she said well you know if you didn't want to come you could have just said that which is so true if you didn't want to come and you knew you didn't want to come but you felt like maybe you should but you didn't really want to at any point or when you left earlier you could have been like 
you know, everything's cool. I'll talk to you about it later. I just got to go. You know, we'll talk about it later. Anything other than just leaving like that and being like, oh, I'll be there soon and never showing up. It's because that's you want to keep shit. you want to keep the pussy open. Yeah. You want to. You don't want to do it anything to, to shut close down. that door. Thank you so much, friend. That's it. Niggas be selfish. That's what it is. And they don't mind fucking with your emotions. If it means the possibility for them to still get some ass is still there. Bottom line. That's it. And so they don't mind fucking with you for it. And that's when she gets mad. Oh, She's like, you ghosted on me in front of my people. You knew that this, I knew that this wasn't no serious thing. I knew that you had just got about, out of a relationship, but you fronted like we really had something. You came over here looking all contrite like a sad ass puppy dog after you fucked Issa. Like you were guilty. Oh. Like you had done something wrong. You are a fuck nigga. And he was shocked. He's like, Tasha, Come like, on now. why are you talking to she me She said, like no, this? you're actually worse because you're a fuck nigga who thinks you're a good guy. Ooh. I said, oh, the Lawrence Hive is not going to take this well. <laughs> the Tasha Hive foreman, okay? The ta- I said, now listen, I've come dangerously close to not, I've called this girl everything <laughs> but a child of God. <laughs> But in that moment, I'm like, yes, sis, you yes. are absolutely right. She was clear. That the you can say whatever you want to. Like as far as Lawrence is concerned, in this, you know, oh yeah, I would love to come do this or da 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 or you come apologize to me or whatever. But like your actions matter so much more. And so for you to front, like she said, for you to front like this was something more. And, and agree to come what? to a family thing. For what? That's what I never We could have just had the casual ass thing. But I noticed the whole apartment searching thing, that storyline wasn't brought up in this episode. So maybe he dropped the idea of getting his own place. And he's staying with her. Because he was, stay- he was, he was oh, in the yeah. bed with her that night. And You're they're like, right. we didn't finish Shark Tank from last week. Like, So do y'all just... Has he been just been living with you? He's a hobosexual. That's exactly what he is. And saving a lot of money in the process. <laughs> Jesus, I can't. So he looks sad for about five seconds, but then Brooke pops back up and he's like, huh, well, hmm, you know. Or maybe I read that wrong, but no, it looked to me like he was just No, that kind of pissed me like, off too, though, because if you know that you just made someone feel this way and then you just go and go back to the right, party. Like, oh, yeah, I'm coming back. Right. Like, But he is. A fuck boy. He is. Damn and, it, Lawrence. <laughs> I was rooting. For, I feel like Tyra. I was rooting, I was for, rooting you. for you, Lawrence. I, I mean, listen, all niggas have the capability. And really, I've been on Lawrence's side for most of this because he is the one who got cheated on. And anything you do in response to somebody cheating on you, I feel like that person cannot really be angry. Like if I decide to leave you for that, you can't really be mad at me for that. Or, you know, I know a lot of y'all on team East are like, Lawrence shouldn't have came back and had sex with her or Lawrence should just do this or give her another try or whatever. But I don't believe any of that. I think if somebody has done you wrong like that, you can go off and heal in whatever way is best for you. And if you want to go off and fuck a lot of different people, then do, do that. that. But I, but there has to be, and this is what I was saying about meeting a dude that is clear about his intentions. Yes. Imagine if he had told Tasha, listen, I just got out of a fucked up ass situation. I'm just trying to fuck you and chill don't invite me to no damn barbecue. Right. It's not like that. I'm not interested in you that way. If you're cool with it, then be cool with it. Right. But the fact that he, and this is something It's the that way I, he played it. Yeah, and I think men should think about this. It's not just men, it's women too, but mainly men. Yeah, it is. <laughs> when you guys are hurt, because you don't process your emotions, and I get it, the way society is set up it's you're not, not really, really encouraged right you're not encouraged to do that mm-hmm. i totally get it but you guys hide under other people for do your better. healing <laughs> you know like you go in and expect a woman to take on your bullshit to heal you and then when you're healed or whatever it is you just move you're on fine. and throw her away like because now he was Lawrence better feels better yeah he feels better he's light skin girls are friend. interested in him now so he's like <laughs> He's, I ain't got to go back. Yeah, he's not in the thick of like the pain of it. So yeah. now that's why he can kind of be like, fuck it. Now yeah. Natasha feels bad. I hate that. I hate that. I do too. At the same time, though, the, the hate for Tasha in my heart is still piping up like, but. But you knew. You knew. That's the thing, girl. You knew. And he niggas had a ain't shit. When she met him. And you were still, you were pursuing him when he had a girlfriend. So. Maybe this is just exactly how the situation was supposed to end for the both of y'all. Or Learned maybe it won't end at all. Yeah. Maybe y'all oh will be right God. back at it. If they're watching Shark Tank again, I'm going to be so <laughs> tight. <laughs> Tasha, please don't do it. It would not surprise me if Tasha was like, whatever, nigga, you hungry? Again. 
<laughs> that's exactly how niggas do. Damn it. But I I'm thought guilty. <laughs> you can't argue. <laughs> at me crystal at me (laughs) it's hard for me too sometimes to be like no we're really i'm not no like this time i'm this time i'm for real i am done with your ass don't text me no more and then you see the bubbles coming up on the screen (laughs) yeah or you know get back with him and then break his heart i mean that's always that's a valid strategy (laughs) Issa is picking her clothes up putting them back on leaving out of eddie's place and you know again he pops up and says you know you ain't gotta go you can spend the night if you want to which i think is just another indicator of his kind of sweet personality he seems seems like a really really nice guy yeah like under other circumstances even we could have dated but isa's in homo (laughs) So she's like, like me thanks. and homeboy, <laughs> like me and the football player, man. Uh, right. Exactly. Sometimes just like just that. Bad timing. He's your football player. So <laughs> she takes her charger back on the way out because she saw his plugged in like, nigga, you know, good and damn well. That wasn't your take charger. my shit back. <laughs> <laughs> but she's proud of herself for having a whole experience. She successfully hoed. Yeah. She's on her way back to her apartment. And she gets a tender alert talking about we should hook up sometime so and she's like part motherfucking two. she's smiling like ho face here we come and i'm thinking i just hope we bring some condoms with us <laughs> <laughs> i really want Issa to have a whole face and actually just show me the way because i'm looking forward to starting mine <laughs> so i just feel like i'm gonna bring a lot more prophylactics than what you're currently <laughs> using girl so insecure episode three friend what are we thinking predictions what's happening right let's see these predictions you know how you are where are your tea leaves <laughs> let's see what my crystal says <laughs> not the tea leaves the bottom of my coffee mug um mm. um I, i'm now i'm curious about Tasha and Lawrence. I want. I think it's over. I, I hope it is. And I. And it's funny because just last week we were like, remember our predictions? I was like, it's gonna work between them because a lot of the times, you know, with when yeah. guys, I've I've experienced it myself where a guy will break up, he'll date a rebound and end up like staying with her for years, and it works. They even married. Oh yeah, them. I, I'm really good for prepping niggas for Yo. being, you know, with somebody Yo, long term. Shit is wild. I'm like they'll marry the rebound. Yeah. <laughs> so I've seen it so yeah. many times. So that's why I was like, I can see it working. But now I'm like, oh shit. Nah, Lawrence is Lawrence is hurt, and he needs to deal with his fucking hurt. Maybe he needs to buy 444 or watch some of them videos that went along with it. But you know, I think it's, They're I think both it's something. Gonna have a whole phase. The men who love this show so much and are always talking about Lawrence Hive this and Lawrence that are really going to have to take a hard look at themselves Please. after this like how many women have you done this to yo real shit how many women have you done this to and then she call you a fuck nigga or get mad and you be like I don't even know what's wrong with her I said it wasn't nothing right you said it wasn't nothing but then your action said something else and if you Speak feel like crystal. it's because this is where y'all fuck up if you feel like it is only a casual thing then treat it that way bus and go home <laughs> Spending the night cuddling, and y'all watching don't tell shows. Me you miss me. Family barbecues. You apologizing for sleeping with somebody else, nigga. Why? Don't don't meet my mom. You can do whatever <laughs> you want to, as long as you here by ten thirty, no later than. <laughs> Drop them draws. <laughs> but niggas don't want to do and that. Don't get out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, so no, that's just, so real. That's so, so, so man. real. They need a 444 four, four round table, okay? <laughs> Y'all need to sit down and think about where you fucked up and, and why you continue to get that. And the You're trail of tears nigga. that yeah. you've left behind. Huh. So, hmm, I think Issa's going to continue this <laughs> whole face for a while i think eddie might catch feelings maybe like your football player oh i can see that because he seems so nice he seems really sweet i mean he shared gossip girl with her <laughs> white girls doing your thing <laughs> it's good to see him doing it there <laughs> it just cracks me up so we'll see make sure you check out hashtag insecurity thank you so much to everybody who has been participating in the hashtag love to see y'all's feedback you guys are comments. hysterical y'all are i literally so funny. been reading it all week just because yes. you guys keep talking about it throughout the week so it's amazing thank you guys for participating and sharing your thoughts on it yes don't forget to subscribe rate and review on apple podcasts and wherever you get your favorite shows and we'll be back next week bye, bye. Insecurity is a Loudspeaker Studios production. Our producer is Matt Raz. Our editor is Ty Worley. Our social media coordinator is Barry. And don't forget to follow Loudspeakers on social media. We're Ellison Podcasts on Twitter or Loudspeakers Network on Facebook and Instagram.